with a new system that can exploit them some more, with all the arrogance that comes with it, I wanted to give people the opportunity to be totally independent of the grid system. Remember, that was my goal. So we took the big one we had and we scaled it down into a model not much, a little bit smaller than this one. It was a little smaller than this. It was about that long. It's about 13 inches long, six inches in diameter. And that one was going to be big enough to be able to power all the energy you needed for your house. And so I didn't want one bigger than that. And by the way, that little unit could fit in the glove compartment of any American-made car. I went across the United States of America telling my story. I told it in every state of the United States and I got a thousand people to join me telling my story. We put a media ad campaign together because the media wouldn't cover it. So we ran commercials. And we did a 60 second commercial cutting a power line and saying you can power your house with no electricity, external electricity, run your car with a new engine that runs with no gasoline. We did a 60 second commercial nationwide. As far as we can tell, about 10 million people saw it. And after that happened, that was too much. That couldn't be tolerated. And so I got a letter from the state of California inviting me to come back to California to go to court. So I flew back from New Jersey to California to go to court. And when I walked into the court, the judge said, you're probably wondering why you're here. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, because I've been ordered by the state of California to put you in prison. And I said, well, that's really interesting. You're putting me in prison, but I've never been convicted of the crime. <laughs> How do I go to prison without a trial and without being convicted? And I said, you can't do that, can you? And he said, well, he says, I've been ordered by the state of California to put you in prison, so that's where you're going, but sounds like you got a hell of a case for appeal. That, by the way, is a quote, and I do have the transcript. I walked out of prison two years ago, and now we have rebuilt our whole national network of distribution of distributors. We're in every state of the United States. We're in every major county of the United States. We have people now who understand exactly how the government works, exactly how the big boys work, exactly how the energy companies work. And we've got it all figured out. And we've got far, far, far more technology than we ever had in 1987. We got a lot more money than we ever had in 1987. And we're about to rock your world. As if the amazing over-unity results of these pioneering inventions are not enough, a curious combination of side effects to free energy research involves such things as the transmutation of metals, the formation of new isotopes, and yes, even anti-gravity. Levitation effects from spinning magnetic disks conjure up images of UFOs hovering in mid-air. British inventor John Serrell has led the way along these lines, but his technique is not the only approach. The remarkable works of Canadian inventor John Hutchison has drawn widespread attention from businessmen and government scientists since 1979 when he began using ultra-high electromagnetic frequencies to transform matter in some very unusual ways. It has come to be known as the Hutchison effect. The objects you are seeing um, moving there is a form of levitation by uh, translational movement, meaning that the objects become lighter and can float around, the heaviest being the barium cylinder that you see there um, with the two wires coming out of it. it tends to slide around on seven pounds of its own weight. The physics of it is self-resonation of what they call ferromagnetic and piezoelectric barium type name. Uh, through a power amplifier and broad and narrow uh, bands of electrical energy going into this crystal. So the applications of this in advanced applications using free energy or zero-point energy to power it would be in uh, propulsion technologies. This is a crystal converter unit that I made about a year ago to see if the principle worked and indeed it seems to work to this day. Um, the principles involve the Casimir effect and uh, space charge type of barrier technology in semiconductors and um, a jitter activity called zero-point energy. 
that goes through time and space, the idea is to get the material inside this to interface with the uh, jittering action of zero-point energy. And moving on to what they may look like inside, I actually bring out a piece here of this material of common minerals and that produced in a special way and I take a reading here and I should be getting a higher reading I had a hot spot somewhere on here I have here almost a half a volt as you can see as one can see there's no batteries in this or anything else except just crystalline material with different uh, configurations and this is a steady state it's always that and has been tested up to a year's time and under stress tests also so which made me decide to then of course mount the same material in cylinders different cylinders of course there are different mixes in there and i found that uh, that some of the cylinders are not as powerful as this material here or this very tiny one here Actually, this has more power than this large artillery shell unit here. And what I want to do, of course, is to um, <clears throat> demonstrate it in the sense of it making actual power. And that means to turn on a small motor. Okay, I'm attaching this to the base here. Another lead to the top, and it should spin, which it does. So yeah, basically, this kind of material powering motors. Of course, a very small motor at this time, but scaled up in larger amounts of, of material can power up to uh, several horsepower if needed. Hutchison hopes his simple shake and bake method of producing these crystal energy converters will attract investors who can see the potential of permanent batteries which never need charging. Non-toxic that will interface with the zero-point energy in space and time. Hutchison's more dramatic experiments border on the paranormal and have generated more than just a passing interest from U.S. military research labs. We've had about 750 demonstrations of levitations, translational movements, uh, metallurgical samples falling apart, uh, changing into transmuted unknown metals. Uh, quite a variety of obscure types of effects, wood impregnated into uh, metals, other objects in metals, uh, monopole uh, magnetic fields written up in many journals. Um, quite a host or a Pandora's box of different types of effects on the outer edge of, of the scientific uh, community. In this remarkable series of video clips shot by Hutchison, we see what happens when he fine-tunes the electromagnetic frequencies aimed at target objects in his garage. subatomic level I feel that there is a, a dimension shift activated by very conventional electrostatics RF fields that I use and Tesla waves that I use that actually form a keyway that opens up another area of time and space that may activate the zero point energy fields and interdimensional reactions, let's say, to gravitational waves and time waves, or chronons, if you wish. Perhaps we're dealing in chronons and gravitons, which are maybe particles, and somehow causing a distortion, which causes objects to simply break apart or pulsate in the center uh, of stainless steel bars and fall apart, or to become weightless. 